I have been a bit reluctant to make a video like this and I think the reason why is because if I talk about it then that means that I actually need to do something about it. So that's a little scary, not just to me, but I'm sure for a lot of folks as well. The issue that I've been struggling with for really about the past year and a half, maybe two years, is gas. Gear acquisition syndrome. And if you follow my channel and you are just in this tech space, you know that I am certainly not alone in this, but it's something that really needs to be talked about. Now, I did the math over the past, again, 18 months, two years, and I've spent north of $30,000 on microphones, cameras, accessories, uh, audio equipment, like just a whole myriad of different things. And part of the reason why is because I started this, this random tech channel and I just wanted to maybe review some items and just give my perspective on how those items are performing in the real world. Well, what I discovered is that the more items you purchase, the less time you actually spend in the real world. So it's like a, it's like a Jedi mind trick, really. Uh, it's just stunning to me. So I guess the point of my video here today is to recognize that I have been fairly guilty of spending a lot of time and energy on the acquisition piece and not nearly enough time on the use of the gear that I'm actually purchasing. So what does that mean? It means a couple of things. Number one, I'm probably going to be selling a lot of the gear, not a lot, but but definitely a good chunk of the gear that I've purchased uh, again over the past two years because I've kind of honed it down into a kit that I think is pretty solid, you know. And I, and I know that there may be some edge cases where, oh, I wish I had that lens for that particular purpose, but you know, the reality is I'm just looking at, as I kind of hit my my Sigma 85 millimeter 1.4, and this lens is a an awesome lens, but I just don't use it. Uh, I did use it you know, occasionally over the past couple of years or, or past year. I've really only had this for, for less than a year, but haven't used it all that much. And uh, it's taking up space in my home. It makes me think about it. Like when I go out to shoot uh, a video, I'm like, oh, what lens is uh, Ultimately, that's the biggest issue is I have too many options. Anybody else there suffer from that same situation where you just have too many options and you just don't know where to start. So you, every time you go out, you think like, oh, do I need this lens? Do I need that lens? But ultimately, I've really settled on just a couple of lenses. Um, the primary one being the one that I'm filming on right now, which is the Sigma 24 millimeter 1.4 for my studio setup with my FX3. And when I'm out and about, I've got an A7 IV with the 24 to 70, the GM2, that I absolutely love. It's such a great setup. It's so versatile. It does everything. With that A7 IV, I can put it in crop mode and zoom in, and I don't have to worry about it. But um, my, where am I going with this? <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm rambling because, again, I have all this uh, stuff to talk about, but I, I haven't spent any time talking about it because I've been too busy on the stuff, not on the content. Now, so that's the first piece. Now, the other piece is, and something that I recognize, is that storytelling is hard. It really is. It comes naturally, I think, to some folks, but for other folks like myself, it doesn't. So I really need to sketch out a story before I start filming. And I am guilty of definitely not doing that. I am more of the, let's go out, shoot some film, uh, and come back and see what we get and see if I can put a video together with it. And that's not very effective. It just isn't. So I've got a bunch of footage that I've done absolutely nothing with because I don't have a good story to tell. So moving forward on this channel, and again, I don't necessarily care if the channel grows or not. I've got a little over 400 subscribers, which I am very thankful for. And I think it's fantastic. And we've really built a nice community here on this channel. Uh, but moving forward, it's going to be less about gear reviews, not necessarily no gear reviews. I'll still continue to do those when I do purchase uh, some type of gear that um, will help me evolve as a, you know, just as a a hobbyist here. I'm not, I, let me state that too. I am not a professional. It's not like I'm, I'm purchasing this gear uh, and then going out and creating a feature film or a documentary or anything like that. This is just for my own family. It's for my own personal use. It's for my own creative outlet, if you will. And I think there's a ton of people out there who are also purchasing this equipment 
specifically with that in mind, who have no interest in going out and actually charging for their services. Now, may I, will I eventually? Maybe. I don't know. But very doubtful. I just, I, you know, I, I, I'm i in real estate. I'm a full-time realtor. So that is the biggest part of my business. Obviously, that is my business. And that's where I spend the bulk of my time. But this is certainly a hobby of mine. And I can use this equipment in that real estate world as well, right? So I do, I have a separate channel that does, um, talks about, you know, market conditions, maybe does some tips and, you know, tip, not tips and tricks, but like just general tips for home buying or home selling. And th- this is kind of a dual purpose, like where I can use it here in my studio and I can also use it out and about when I'm working on that stuff. But anyways, storytelling, I recognize I need to get better at it. Uh, and I find that the videos that I really enjoy out there are the ones that are telling a story with a beginning, middle and end. And it's not too long. Doesn't ramble on like I'm doing right now. <laughs> and and it's just a good piece of content that I feel good about that I can share with you. So I understand the impact that that's going to have on my channel in terms of growth. It probably, you know, everyone's looking for the latest and greatest. Consumerism, in my opinion, is like out of control, especially in this tech space. Like every time something, an embargo lifts, like the YouTube is just inundated with all of these creators. And that's no, I have no problem with them doing that. But it is, again, just something that I think just feeds into that consumerism. And it's not healthy. And, 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 Quite frankly, it's very expensive. Now, of course, I have a business, so I I have the ability to write off these expenses because I do use them for my business. But for a lot of people, they don't have that, right? So it's just an expense. Um, And, you know, to be changing cameras all the time doesn't make a lot of financial sense for a lot of folks. And not to mention, these cameras today, they're so good. Like this FX3, what else is going to come along that's going to dethrone this? I I don't know. I'd be hard-pressed to find something, you know, shooting... It shoots, you know, 4K 60, 4K 120, like internal fan. The only thing it doesn't have is an EVF, and I wish it did, but, you know, it's not the end of the world. I could put a monitor on if I wanted to, but um, I don't know. I just don't, I don't, I don't see the big, huge leaps in technology happening that I would say that we saw maybe four or five years ago. And it really all start, all changed with the A7S III. That camera is just amazing. Um, and that's what the guts of this FX3 are. But anyways, see what I'm talking about? My storytelling sucks. And you know what? That's okay, because we're going to get better. Maybe I'll do some scripts. Maybe I won't. I don't know. But if you are into that and you want to join me on this journey, please do. It would be great. Anyways, that's all I have today. I hope you're having a great day. If you did enjoy this video, make sure that you smash the like button. And also click the subscribe button down below to be notified of future videos. Thanks for watching. Take care.